Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today's episode is going to be a $50 deck tech. When I say $50, I mean that is an overall deck cost. Both shipping and commanders that are $10 or less are going to be included in that cost, but basic lands will not be. Decks on this channel are built to be fun, inexpensive, and focused. If you want to learn more about what a focused commander deck is, check out this video here. On this deck tech, I'm going to take you through its strategy, the tactics, and how this deck wins. This show and episodes like this one are possible because of viewers like you. So if you're looking for some easy ways to help support the show, make sure you like this episode and share it with friends. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Thank you to everyone who's already purchased our merchandise, it really does help support the channel. Another easy way to support this channel is by using our TCG Player affiliate links. So make sure that you're looking for those links in the description whenever you're buying a deck or just individual cards. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. Today's episode comes to you courtesy of Aaron Spellick who is one of my general tier patrons. Aaron has been helping support this show for over a year now. I truly couldn't do this without amazing patrons like Aaron. So Aaron, thank you again and this episode is dedicated to you. Once a year, general tier patrons get to choose a commander for a deck tech that's dedicated to them. And the commander that Aaron chose was Dapala Pilot Exemplar. Dapala is a 3-3 dwarf pilot that costs 1 red white. She has other dwarves you control get plus 1 plus 1, and each vehicle you control gets plus 1 plus 1 as long as it's a creature. And whenever Dapala Pilot Exemplar becomes tapped, you may pay X. If you do, reveal the top X cards of your library, put all dwarf and vehicle cards from among them into your hand, and the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. So this is a very unique and interesting commander that supports both dwarves and vehicles. The biggest thing with this commander though is that she can provide you card advantage. There aren't too many Boros commanders that can actually do that, so we're going to lean into that. The more dwarves and vehicles we run in this deck, the more likely we get them off the top. Now we are going to be running some dwarves with this deck, but we're mostly going to focus on vehicles. For their usually low cost, vehicles can be very powerful. They come with an inherent downside, which is also an upside. To actually be a creature, they need to be crewed. But by not always being a creature, they can avoid the majority of board wipes. There aren't too many commanders that actually work well with vehicles, but Depaul is a fantastic one. She can get you vehicles as well as creatures to crew them too. So what's our strategy with this deck? We're going to use Depaula to help fill the field with vehicles and creatures to crew them. Now Depaula has to actually tap to get cards off the top of our library, but that's no problem for this deck. By simply crewing one of our vehicles, she can do that without getting into harm's way. And then how we win with this deck is pretty simple. We're going to run our opponents over with our fleet of vehicles. Again, our vehicles can be very powerful and very hard to deal with once they're on the field. And outside of Depaula, we've got more ways to make them even deadlier too. As with all Commander's Quarters decks, I'm going to take you through 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how we're going to win with it. So now let's start with tactic number one, Fuel Up. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bobble, which we can pay two to tap and sacrifice it to search our library for a basic land and put into play tapped. Then we've got Soul Ring, which only costs one and taps for two. This works great with the amount of artifacts that we're running in this deck on top of DePaul's ability. Next up, there's Spring Leaf Drum, which we can tap to tap an untapped creature we control to add one man of any color to our mana pool. This is another great way that we can tap DePaul without actually having to make her attack. And then we're running Prismatic Lens, which can tap for a colorless, or we can use it to filter our mana. Next up is Marble Diamond, which may enter the battlefield tap, but it taps for a white. And then we've got three mana rocks that each cost two and can tap for both of our colors. Star Compass enters the battlefield tapped, and we can tap it for either of our colors if we have both of our base glands. Talisman of Conviction can tap for our colors, or can tap for either of our colors, but deals one damage to us. And then by paying one into Boro Signet and tapping it, it adds red white. Like I mentioned before, we're running a ton of artifacts in this deck, so cards like Foundry Inspector and Joyous Familiar come in huge. Foundry Inspector makes all of our artifact spells we cast cost one less to cast. And Joyous Familiar is similar, it makes our historic spells cost one less to cast. Next up, there's Blink Moth Urn, which can really take advantage of all of our artifacts and generates a ton of mana. Because at the beginning of each player's pre combat main phase, if Blink Moth Urn is untapped, that player adds colors for each artifact they control. And with all of our vehicles in Nepal's trigger, we're always going to have a place for that mana. And finally, there's actually a vehicle that can produce mana with Cultivator's Caravan. It's a 5 5 with Crew 3 that can tap to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. So at Crew 3, this can actually be crewed by Nepal and most of our creatures. And we're running a ton of other powerful vehicles in this deck. So it's time to go through the first batch of vehicles in tactic number two, crew one. So in this tactic, every single one of the vehicles has a crew one cost. So any creature or creature token in this deck can crew these vehicles. And because they have the exact same crew cost, I'm not going to mention on any of the cards. First up, we're going to be running Sky Skiff and Smuggler's Copter. Sky Skiff is a 2-3 with flying and Smuggler's Copter is a 3-3 with flying. And Smuggler's Copter has whenever it attacks or blocks, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. 
The Looter Scooter is very efficient, can help you replace any dead cards in your hand. Next up, there's Mizium Tank, which is a 3 2 with Trample and has whenever you cast a non creature spell, Mizium Tank becomes an artifact creature and gets plus one plus one until end of turn. So you essentially get a free crew cost and you pump it whenever you cast a non creature spell. Next up at four mana, we've got both Oval Chase Dragster and Untethered Express. Oval Chase Dragster is a 6 1 with Trample and Haste, so it can get in some damage quick. And Untethered Express starts off as a 4 4 with Trample, but it has whenever it attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on it. It only takes a few attacks for this to get really out of hand. And on top of that, again, Depala is already pumping all of your vehicles. Now that we've tackled our vehicles that have crew 1 though, what's next? You may have already guessed it, but it's time to move on to tactic number 3, crew 2. First up at 3 mana, we've got Mobile Garrison, Renegade Freighter, and Daredevil Dragster. Mobile Garrison is a 3-4, and when it attacks, we can untap another target artifact or creature we control. So this can ramp us by untapping one of our mana rocks, or it can help us untap a creature so that we can have it back for blocking. Or that untapped creature can help us crew a vehicle later. Renegade Freighter is a 4-3, and when it attacks, it gets plus 1 plus 1 and trample until end of turn. And again, with our Commander's Anthem effect, it's going to make it a 6-5 with trample, which is a pretty good deal for 3 mana. Daredevil Dragster is a 4-4, and says at the end of combat, if Daredevil Dragster attacked or blocked this combat, Put a velocity counter on it. Then if it has two or more velocity counters on it, sacrifice it and draw two cards. So we can be pretty aggressive with this card and still get some extra benefit from it. And then there's Fleet Rail Cruiser, which is a 5-3 with Trample and Haste, and when it enters the battlefield, it becomes an artifact creature until end of turn. So essentially that crew cross is free the first time and it can get some quick damage in. Finally, there's Dust Legion Dreadnought, which is a 4-6 with Vigilance, so this can be a fantastic blocker for us. Like many Boros decks, this is going to be a very aggressive deck. So being able to attack with a creature and still keep it back for blocking can be huge. And now that we've tackled crew two, what's next? It might be pretty obvious, but let's move on to tactic number 4, Crew 3. First up, there's Heart of Karen, which is a 4 4 with Flying and Vigilance. And it also adds you may remove a loyalty counter from a Planeswalker you control rather than pay Heart of Karen's crew cost. This won't always come up, but we are running one Planeswalker in the deck that can help out with this. Next up, there's Bomat Bazaar Barge, Iron Tread Crusher, and Weathered Light, which each cost 4. The Barge is just a 5 5, but it draws us a card when it comes into play. And then Iron Tread Crusher is just a 6 6, but again, that's a pretty good rate. And Weathered Light is a 4 5 with Flying, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we look at the top 5 cards of our library. We can then reveal a historic card from among them and put it into our hand. Then we put the rest on the bottom of our library in a random order. So on top of being a good attacker, this can provide us some extra value too. And finally at 5 mana, we've got Ballista Charger and Sky Sovereign Console Flagship. Ballista Charger is a 6-6, and when it attacks, it deals 1 damage to our creature or player. And Sky Sovereign does this in an even bigger way. It's a 6-5 with flying, and when it enters the battlefield or attacks, it deals 3 damage to our creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. So on top of being a great attacker, it can take out some pesky creatures or planeswalkers. So now we've gone through crews 1, 2, and 3, what do you think's next? Let's go on to tactic number 5 with not just crew 4. First up there's Peace Walker Colossus which is a fantastic card in this deck. For 3 mana it's a 6-6 six, six with crew 4. And by paying 1 in a white you can make another target vehicle you control an artifact creature until end of turn. So if we need to we can get around a crew cost by just paying some mana. Next up there's Conqueror's Galleon which is a 2-10 for 4 mana and has crew 4. It won't stay that way for long though because when it attacks we exile at the end of combat then return to the battlefield transformed under our control. It transforms into the very versatile land Conqueror's Foothold. It can tap for Colossus, we can pay 2 and tap it to loot, we we can pay 4 and tap it to draw a card, or we can pay 6 and tap it to return target card from our graveyard to our hand. This is a very flexible land that can really come in handy for us. Next up there's the Eridar Express which is a huge threat. It costs 5 and it's an 8-6 with Menace that has crew 4. So again with our commander in play this is a 9-7 that can't be chump blocked by just one creature. Coming up next is our last crew 4 vehicle with Parhelion 2. It's a 5-5 with Flying, First Strike, and Vigilance and it costs 6 white white. And when it attacks we create 2 4-4 four, four white angel creature tokens with Flying and Vigilance that are attacking. With just a few attacks this can get out of control very quickly. Those angels that it creates can even help crew it or other vehicles. Next up we've got another heavy hitter with Demolition Stomper. It's a 10-7 that costs 6 and has crew 5 and it can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. And finally there's Consulate Dreadnought which is a 7-11 that just costs 1 but it does have crew 6. So as you can see with this deck we're going to be running a ton of deadly vehicles. But outside of our commander who's going to be crewing those vehicles? Let's see some of them in tactic number 6 and my axe. So outside of vehicles, we're going to be running a decent amount of dwarves in this deck too. Remember that like vehicles, Depala can actually get them off the top of our library and pump them. First up, there's Toolcraft Exemplar, which says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control an artifact, it gets plus two plus one until end of turn. And if you control three or more artifacts, it also gains first strike until end of turn too. So with just one vehicle and our commander in play, this is essentially a 4-4 four, four for one mana. And that power can come in handy when it comes to crewing vehicles. Next up, we've got Restoration Specialist and Dwargar Hedge Maze. The Specialist will help us get back an artifact and enchantment, and the Hedge Maze will help us destroy them. And then we've got some dwarves that can really help our vehicles out with Gear Shift Ace, Veteran Motorist, and Renegade 
Renegade Wheel Smith, because when Gear Shift A screws a vehicle, it gains first strike until end of turn. When the motorist screws a vehicle, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn. And whenever a Renegade Wheel Smith becomes tapped, target creature can't block this turn. Some other dwarves that can help out our vehicles are Aether Shield Artificer and Dwarf Guard Mind Captain. The Artificer has at the beginning of combat on your turn, target artifact creature you control gets plus two plus two and gains indestructible until end of turn. And the Mind Captain can help pump our team by paying one in Boros and untapping it, and attacking creatures get plus one plus zero until end of turn. And since we can just keep crewing vehicles with it, we can just keep using this for as much mana as we want to. Another way to pump our team is with Mirror Entity, which is technically a dwarf. It's a changeling, and we can pay X, and until end of turn, creatures we control have base power and toughness, XX, and gain all creature types. So this can be a great way for us to utilize our mana for a huge attack. And finally, we've got Shram and Dwarven Recruiter, which can both come in huge for this deck. Shram says, whenever you cast an aura, equipment, or vehicle spell, draw a card. With a number of vehicles that we run in this deck, we're going to be drawing a ton of cards with this in play. And then Dwarven Recruiter says, when it enters the battlefield, search your library for any number of dwarf cards and reveal those cards, shuffle your library, then put them on top of it in any order. So while this technically doesn't get us any card advantage, it does set ourselves up to get a ton of dwarves off the top of our library with Tapala. But outside of dwarves, we've got other creatures that can crew too. Let's go over them now in tactic number 7, 21 Pilots. First up, there's Goblin Assault, which says, At the beginning of your upkeep, create a 1-1 red Goblin Creature token with haste, and Goblin Creatures attack each turn if able. Now, for most decks with this card, you lose most of your Goblins with your attacks. But instead of attacking, we can just force our Goblins to crew some vehicles. And having an engine that creates Creature Tokens can be very beneficial for this deck, because even if someone tries to wipe the board, it will help us rebuild a crew. Another token generator that comes in big in a lot of ways is Ugin the Ineffable. Ugin's a Planeswalker that costs 6 and starts off with 4 loyalty counters. It has colorless spells you cast, cost two less to cast. Its plus one is exile the top card of your library face down and look at it. Create a 2-2 colorless spirit creature token. When that token leaves the battlefield, put the exiled card into your hand. And its minus three is destroy target permanent that's one or more colors. So first off, just by being in play, this greatly reduces the cost of all of our artifacts. It can also create us tokens that give us card advantage when they die. And on top of that, it can be a great form of removal too. Now while Ugin can do a lot of things for us, Assemble Legion can do one thing very well, and that's create an incredible amount of tokens. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, put a muster counter on Assemble the Legion. Then put a 1-1 red and white soldier creature token with haste on the battlefield for each muster counter on Assemble the Legion. So essentially, each turn we get more and more soldiers. That's more and more creatures to attack or crew our vehicles. And if someone wipes the board, we rebuild extremely quickly. Again, our vehicles are going to be safe for most board wipes. And then Assemble the Legion makes us a ton of soldiers to crew those vehicles again. So we've talked about our board state, but what about dealing with our opponents? Let's go over some cards that can help with that in tactic number 8, Only I Get Toys. First up, there's Crush Contraband, which is a very simple but effective card. It's an instant that says, choose one or both, exile target artifact, and exile target enchantment. Next up, there's Generous Gift, which can destroy any target permanent, but its controller gets a 3-3 Elephant. That's a small price to pay, and we can actually just use that against ourselves to get that 3-3 Elephant so we can crew some vehicles. And then there's Oblation, which says, the owner of target non-land permanent shuffles it into their library, then draws two cards. So again, if we need to draw some cards, we can actually use it on one of our non-land permanents. Next up is Citywide Bus, which is going to destroy all creatures with toughness 4 or greater. Again, our vehicles won't be affected by this if they're not crewed, so this will keep all of our small creatures alive while taking out our opponent's biggest creatures. But perhaps the best way to throw a wrench into our opponent's plans is with the Golden Pig of this deck. The Golden Pig is going to be our number one card out of our 99. And the golden pick for this deck is Noetic Scales. Noetic Scales is an artifact that costs 4 and it has the oracle text that at the beginning of each player's upkeep return to its owner's hand each creature that player controls with power greater than the number of cards in their hand. So again, this is a card that really takes advantage of our vehicles not always being creatures. Unless our opponents can keep a ton of cards in their hand, they're not going to be able to keep their biggest creatures on the board. And if they don't have many cards in their hand when we play this, they're pretty much going to get everything bounced. So with this in play, our vehicles are pretty much always going to be the biggest creatures on the board. And with Depala's trigger, we can keep our hand full to make sure we keep our other creatures on the board too. This card can be absolutely backbreaking and game ending for our opponents. It essentially can be a one-sided board wipe that stays on the board, and that's what makes it the golden pig. But outside of dealing with our opponents things, we also want to make sure that we can protect our own. So it's time to move on to tactic number 9, tougher stuff. First up, there's Pia's Revolution, which says, Whenever a non-token artifact is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return that card to your hand unless target opponent has Pia's Revolution deal 3 damage to him or her. So essentially, if an opponent tries to get rid of our artifacts, including our vehicles, we have a chance to get them back. And since we can choose the opponent that has to take the damage, if someone's low, chances are they're not taking that damage. Next up, there's Boros Charm, which says, Choose 1. Boros Charm deals 4 damage to target player, permanents you control get indestructible until end of turn, and target creature gains double strike until end of turn. Being able to protect your entire board for 2 mana is huge. On top of that, giving one of our vehicles double strike can deal a ton of damage. And finally, there's Gerard Weatherlight Hero. When he dies, we exile him and return to the battlefield all artifact and creature cards in our graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. So essentially, he's a great piece of board wipe protection for both our artifacts and our creatures. Now, protecting our vehicles is great, but how do we really finish off our opponents with them? 
Let's go over that in tactic number 10, run them over. For Settler Speedway Fanatic, which has, when it crews a vehicle, that vehicle gains haste until end of turn. So the Fanatic is fantastic at helping us getting some quick hits in with new vehicles. And then there's Aeronaut Admiral, which gives all of our vehicles flying. Our opponents may think that they have enough blockers up until we put this down. Next up there's Start Your Engines, which says, Vehicles you control become artifact creatures until end of turn, and creatures you control get plus two plus zero until end of turn. So this eliminates the need to crew any of our vehicles, and it pumps every single one of our creatures too. This can be a great way to swing out and finish off our opponents out of nowhere. Another card that can really help us take out our opponents is Throne of the God Pharaoh. It says at the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses life equal to the number of tapped creatures you control. So with this in play, each of our creatures that crew are actually going to hurt our opponents too. And finally, on top of our commander's anthem effect, we're running some more with Tempered Steel, Jor Kadeen, and True Conviction. Tempered Steel is going to give our artifact creatures plus two plus two. Jor Kadeen has Metalcraft. Creatures you control get plus three plus zero as long as you control three or more artifacts. And True Conviction gives all of our creatures double strike and lifelink. These anthems can be just what we need to go over the top and finish off our opponents. Again, I just want to thank Aaron for supporting this channel for over a year as a general tier patron. If you also want to support this channel or want your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you, consider becoming a patron like Aaron. I had a ton of fun building this Depala deck and I hope you enjoyed it. But now that we've gone through the spells in this deck, let's go on to the mana base. First up, we're going to be running Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, both of which we can tap to sacrifice to get a basic land to put into play tapped. Next up, there's Ancient Amphitheater, Needle Spires, Windscarred Crag, Stone Quarry, and Boros Goad Gate, each of which enters the battlefield tapped and tapped for either red or white mana. And then there's Boros Garrison, which bounces the land back to our hand and enters the battlefield tapped, but it taps for red-white. Next up, there's Vivid Meadow and Vivid Crag, each which enter the battlefield tap with two charge counters on them. They can tap for one of our two colors, or we can tap them to remove a charge counter from them and add one mana of any color to our mana pool. And finally, we're running 26 basic lands, 17 are plains, and 9 are mountains. And now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that our deck costs are calculated using TCG Player Optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. The average Apollo EDH rack deck will set you back $77.27. Our deck is going to be more affordable, coming in at $49.97. Again, the price of this deck is the price that I got for it on the day that I'm recording. If you want to see a breakdown of this deck's cost, check out the link in the description. Keep in mind that prices can and will fluctuate and change over time. But with these deck costs, I want to be as transparent as I possibly can. Again, Commander's Quarters decks are about to be tuned and focused within their budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. So let's go through some reasonable upgrades now to see what some of those ways just might be. First up, let's add an Inventor's Fair and take out a Plains. Inventor's Fair can gain us life and help us tutor for an artifact. Next up, let's add in Felwar Stone and take out Marble Diamond. Felwar Stone is just a better mana rock overall. Next up, let's add in Smothering Tithe and take out Prismatic Lens. Smothering Tithe can create us a ton of treasure tokens to get us way ahead of our opponents. Next up, let's add in Mystic Forge and take out Toolcraft Exemplar. We're running a lot of artifacts in this deck and Mystic Forge lets us cast them off the top. And then we're going to upgrade this deck with Fell the Mighty and take out Citywide Bust. Fell the Mighty is just a more flexible wrath that can take out our opponent's best creatures. And finally, let's add in Aureli the War Leader and take out Speedway Fanatic. Getting an extra combat phase each turn can be huge for this deck. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this deck tech are. And make sure that you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future Commanders for deck techs. There's even a general level tier where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one.